first reading is from Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I rescue them from all the places to which they have scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them justice. On the holy mount stands the city he founded. The Lord loves the gates of Zion. More than all the dwellings of Jacob, glorious things are spoken of you, O city of God. Among those who know me, I mention Rahab and Babylon, Philistia to entire with Ethiopia. This one was born there, they say. And out of Zion it shall be said, this one and that one were born in it. The Lord records as he registers the peoples, this one was born there. Singers and dancers alike say, all my springs are in you. The second reading is from the book of, or the second book of Timothy. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in a view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message. Be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when the people will not put up with sound doctrine, but have itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires, and will turn away from listening to the truth, and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, evangelist carry out your ministry fully. As for me, I am already being poured out as a, a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, 
which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. This is the word of the Lord. Yesterday was the day appointed to remember St. Peter and St. Paul. According to a well-attested tradition, the apostles Peter and Paul suffered martyrdom at Rome around the year 64. It is said that Paul, as a Roman citizen, was granted the right to be beheaded by a sword, but that Peter endured crucifixion, being nailed to the cross, upside down. We cannot say whether they died on the same day, but from the very ancient times their martyrdoms have been commemorated together. When Luke wrote the book of Acts, he focused the first half of his account almost entirely on Peter and the role that he played in the founding of the church. This part of the story reaches its climax with Peter's visit to Caesarea where a heavenly vision gave him courage to break with apostolic custom and baptize a family of pagans without requiring them to submit to Jewish regulations. At this point, Luke shifted his attention to Paul and devoted the rest of his account to Paul's missionary journeys, a story which culminates with Paul's arrival at Rome the very heart of the pagan world. Thus, in the book of Acts, Peter and Paul were like runners in a relay race. It was as if Peter carried the gospel during the first lap, then handed it over to Paul, who finished the course. A rather different story emerges from Paul's own letter to the Galatians. Paul presented a picture of conflict with himself as a loner pitted against Peter and the other leaders of the church at Jerusalem. The two parties eventually met and agreed to a mutual recognition of ministries. But a short time later, Peter appeared to go back on this agreement, and Paul rebuked him to his face. In the ensuing controversy, Paul was isolated. A number of his own associates deserted him, and he went off on his own. Paul's letter to the Galatians is the only first-hand information that we have, and as far as it goes, Peter and Paul are frozen in a history of fierce antagonism. Today's feast bears witness of that, even if their disagreement was not resolved <coughs> in the realm of human history. Their martyrdom united them in the paschal victory of Jesus Christ. Now, as we well know, our Catholic cousins put a lot of their faith in St. Peter. And the Protestant religions put more of their faith in St. Paul. And that's easily recognized because the huge church in Rome is called St. Peter's. The huge church in London is called same Paul's. And tomorrow <coughs> is Canada Day. Canada Day is a national holiday, not a feast of the church. And yet it is right that we Christians offer prayer and thanksgiving today because of all the good things that we enjoy as Canadians and their origin as gifts of God. The resources of our land and the oceans which border it our diversity as a Canadian people, the heritage of Confederation, and our con nation's continuing efforts to ensure peace and justice for all its citizens. All these things call the Church to remember and celebrate the God who gave them. At the same time, we as people of the Church must accept an immense responsibility as citizens of Canada. We believe that divine grace seeks to fulfill what divine power has created. We are the servants of this saving purpose of God, 
We do not leave the concerns of Canadian society behind us when we enter our churches. We enter our churches in order to gain fresh strength from the work of making God's justice, compassion, and wisdom ever more present in the life of our nation. On Canada Day, our task is to dedicate ourselves to the mission of bringing all of our country's resources, natural and human, within the circle of God's redemptive love. And that's ever increasingly important as we continue to deal with the effects of the residential schools, the recent discovery of so many unmarked graves, little ones that were born and died and never had a chance at life and some of the anger that is being directed especially to the Catholic Church but probably to all churches we're all tarred with the same brush so we pray for reconciliation understanding and whatever it takes to make this right of your power. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. <clears throat> we'll just go back to the other page. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your, your hands, hands, O Lord, Lord I commend my spirit. spirit. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. Into your, your hands, hands, O Lord, Lord I commend Lord. my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping. That awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Now, now Lord, you let, let your servant go in peace. Your, your word has been fulfilled. Mine own eyes have seen thy salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Amen. Almighty God, your blessed apostles Peter and Paul, glorified you in their death as in their life. Grant that your church, inspired by their teaching and example, are made one by your spirit, may ever stand firm upon the one foundation, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. And may your blessing be upon, be upon us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. <clears throat> For you will, O Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus. For the night is at hand, and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning. So we will look for you, O Christ. Come with the dawning of the day. And make yourself known in the breaking of bread. The Lord bless and watch over us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. Amen. Amen.